Hey guys, welcome back to the another video, which is the continuation of the logo carousel creation. And today is the uh, part two. So let's uh, begin. All right. So last into the last episode, what we have done, we initialized our owl carousel and uh, we created the content settings section here. We also created the slider settings section here and we just uh, grab those uh, content settings uh, values and implemented it into our code so that it was reflecting into the front end as well so today what we will do we will uh, pass through this slider settings into our javascript so that if we change those values that will reflect into the front end as well okay so let's get started so um, uh, what we have done so far we added loop dots naps and margins so four controls all right so in order to do those uh, transition from um, transition of the values from php to javascript we need to do some extra things into the render method so let's use the add render attribute here so like this this add render attribute and it's gonna take some parameters as well the first one is the id of the of the of those parameters so that we can use by this id later let's say logo caros carousel options and then we need to pass an array and set that we need to uh, pass uh, some values as well the first one is the id now the id is uh, important because if you want to uh, you know use multiple slider in a same page you need to have the id unique in order to uh, set the values uh, for the individuals individual sliders so uh, how we can make those unique we can do like logo carousel and then we can say something like this uh, this uh, i think it's get id yes so this is the method which will uh, you know give us a random string so uh, the next thing we will pass will pass some custom uh, html attributes and we know uh, we can pass custom html attributes like prefixing data dash and the uh, attribute name like if you want to create a custom attributes like loop so we can say data dash loop so by this we can grab uh, this uh, loop into into the javascript so we can pass that and here we can pass the value we want so we can say settings and the value of the loop and similar way we can create bunch of them uh, like for the uh, dots and for the naps and also for the margin as well and also we can associate the value with those dots and for the naps and also for the margin all right so let's format those tools all right so now the, uh, it's time to pass those values into this div actually so how we can do that we do have a way to pass those values into this and uh, for this we need to use another method and the method name is get render attribute string so we can say like echo this get render uh, attribute string and instead that we need to pass this id so that it will grab all those values and convert it into a into some html attributes and we'll pass it through this all right so far so good so let's check uh, check that out into the front end so that we can uh, check what happened into the dom so if we go uh, go here and hit reload and then if we inspect it 
like this and if we find out the dom just hover it over and as you can see this is the attribute that we are talking about uh, this is the id the logo carousel and the unique string and this is the data loop and this is blank because it is i think is staying false so let's you know change those values actually and hit update and this time let's refresh it and this time check let's uh, see the data loop is true dots is true data nav is true and margin is 10 so this is how we can actually pass these values into the dom and from there we we, we can grab these values into the javascript all right so the next task is to grab this value into the javascript so let's see how we can do that so in order to make this value workable in our script we need to uh, make some adjustment as well here okay so i will keep this code as it is but let's start some adjustment here so i will take a variable here let's say logo carousel and i will take a function and it will take two parameter one is scope and another just a dollar sign and i will take another variable like this and it will be like this scope dot it will find uh, the id of the carousel that we are looking for and it is the logo carousel now when it finds the id i need another one for grabbing the current id of that particular element and we need to set that id and also we know that the html id has the prefix of hashtag when we use it in a script so we concatenate with this one and then we just assign the value and because uh, when we get the id and it is an attribute so we need to use the attr function of it and because it is id we need to use the id and then we will use another another we'll take another variable to grab the loop and this time we are going to use this dot find uh, sorry not find because we already find the value with this and this time uh, for getting the loop attribute because the attribute name is data uh, if you if we go to the element again if you see it is data dash loop or data dash dot so if you want to grab the value of this attribute we just need to access like uh, dollar sign uh, selector dot, dot data and then within the quotation if we give the uh, string as loop then it will grab the value of this attribute so that means we can do like data and like this so it will grab the value of that one and similar way we will duplicate this and we will say for the dots and we'll say here also for the nabs we'll say nabs here and for the margin we'll have margin here as well all right so we can close it here because we do not need any more so far all right so this is how we are grabbing the values from this attribute from the element actually now so what we will do we'll take another variable and name it owl and here we will uh, pass the id of that selector and this is stored in the current id and then what we will do in the owl now we have the current id of that selector so we can now say owl dot owl carousel like this and similar way actually i'm doing the same thing here if you understand it i'm doing the same thing exactly same thing here see uh, uh, i am storing the 
uh, if you understand this this one this is the class but I am grabbing the ID like this so this part is exactly the this one and this one is storing in owl so I am using here owl dot owl so this method and now I am passing the objects exactly like this one so what I can do I can cut it from here and paste it here and I can remove this from this from there alright so I can just give indentation here now what I can do I can make those values dynamic so and I do have those dynamic values here so what I can do I can say I can replace those static values by those dynamic values that I have so I can say merge in here and I can say naps here I can say dots here and let's keep those responsive as it is we do not work with those yet so this is the dynamicification of our values from the PHP but we are not done yet because because we just assign the functions but we haven't used it so in order to use it this uh, this way and communicate with the Elementor we actually need to use a Elementor front-end hook and use uh, this function within the hook otherwise it will not work exactly what how we want so I'm just copying it from my code repo so we do not need to write it and I will explain it to you so we are loading it on window window event and this is the hook name Elementor slash front front end slash init so when the elementor front end initialized then this hook triggers and it is within the function the hook name is elementor front end dot hooks dot add action and this is front end dash element ready and this is the important part see dot default so before uh, default is always fixed so this is the now where is this coming from so let's go into our logo carousel.php and go at the top so in the get name we gave a id remember so this is exactly what we need to put it down here before the dot default so dot default is always be like this and before that we need to prefix with the uh, id we provided here okay and then what we need we need to pass the function that we want to trigger with that one okay so we want this function so like this got it okay so now let's save so we are done with it so hopefully everything should work okay so let's see now let's hit a refresh all right so it is one two three four five already so it is working because I think in the responsiveness there is already five so let's put it four I like to show four in the desktop so yes it is actually working so let's check that uh, whether our uh, uh, these options are working or not okay so let's also hit a refresh here so everything should reload okay it also comes here but it might not work because we are not setting the uh, uh, code uh, into our you know uh, uh, into the content template so it might not work exactly what we want but let's check the uh, settings values first all right so let's hit uh, the dots okay and nabs and loops everything so hit update see it's gone because it is not should not work as we want so as you can see our navs is coming dots is coming you know and it is looping through as we want it is looping through so let's change again so let's from let's put it 30 and let's not show the dots and hit update and let's see into the front end now see the gap is increased there is no dots and we can navigate uh, with the nav but there is no dots so our uh, code is actually working through the uh, JavaScript as well 
all right so into the next episode what i will show show you is the problem that we are having into the editor and it is not pretty because a user will not update here and check it here it is not good okay user always want to show the live preview on the editor so in the next episode we will show how we can fix these uh, problems into the uh, front end as well so see you in the next video